welcome to the Gateway RV Transport podcast, where we are able to uh, connect with, meet, and learn about our drivers. And so, uh, if you're listening to this, we are here with Mr. Rob Bell, who's been with us for a little while. How, how long have you been a driver? 30, 33 months. 33 right. months. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 400,000 miles. All right. Okay, I know. 45 states. Okay, really? 45. And you haven't done, you said you haven't been to the Northwest yet? By, by choice. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing, no offense. I just, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a really long way. It's a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to drive around in circles. Yeah. What do you got to hit on your list though? What, Washington? Yeah. Oregon? Oregon. Alaska? Yeah. Vermont? Okay. Uh-huh. New Jersey. Yeah. There's one more somewhere. Hawaii, probably. We, we won't be saying that. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, you got it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah cool. we'll have to go there on your own. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am a product of uh, the Department of Education. <laughs> Pub- public schooling my entire life. <laughs> so are we. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you guys are good looking. Uh, I don't know about yeah, a bit yeah, of a stretch. Come on, come on. And the, the good thing, it's a good thing. This is a podcast. I yeah. was told that I have uh, the per- face for radio, yeah. the perfect face for radio. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was told just to suck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob. So, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks oh, for being here. It's my pleasure. Yeah. We um, we've been looking forward to having you come around just just to yeah just to hang out just to chat for a little bit. So yeah. start. Tell us a little. Where are you from? Growing up, where? where yeah. What are your? I, I'm an Im- your... I am an immigrant. Okay. From the state of Florida, I immigrated <laughs> from Florida to Georgia when I was only a four month old, and uh, I lived in Georgia with my family for four years, and uh, then we immigrated to the state of Tennessee, and I've been a state of Tennessee residents resident for over 50 years, 48 years, like I said, public education. Makes you (laughs) old. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm getting there. Spent a lot of time uh, in the state of Tennessee, uh, southeast Tennessee. Uh, My father was Air Force Mm -hmm. and um, moved around a bunch. Um, he was an air traffic controller. That's how he got to Georgia. He worked in Atlanta. Then when he contracted out, he got a job in uh, Atlanta Hartsfield Airport, 1970. Stayed there till 74. I've got some early memories of that, which are very precious. And uh, it was just kind of a blur from there. Five different high schools. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Yeah. <laughs> the Johnny come lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so from that, you know, I learned, uh, you know, you have to be really careful about who you associate yourself with. Yeah. So, so here I am as an RV transport man, you know, from, from there to here, you know, all those high schools and then I spent a lot of time just wandering. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, mm-hmm. Fell in love several times, and I found that I was not very good at being married. I tried, mm-hmm. but uh, maybe I just didn't pick the right women. But uh, so here I am, well past middle age, and I'm on my own again. The transport business, the 33 months, it's been amazing. The, the journey home every time becomes that much more special because you beat the odds in doing this work. And I know I kind of jump around a little bit. Uh, I'm, you know, this is a little bit daunting just to be on microphone, <laughs> being recorded, talking about yourself because mm-hmm. now there's a record. <laughs> so before, I would just like stand in bars and talk about myself and tell people about me. And it didn't really matter because there wasn't any accountability. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. If it makes you feel any better, there's probably going to be about six people that listen to this 
And three uh, of them are in here right now. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's still, you know, this is, yeah. uh, so, so you know, me thanking you for having me here. Yeah, this is great. Because uh, you're allowing me to be introspective, to, to look at who Rob Bell is. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to go ahead and tell you, I have four names. It's Rob, Robert, mm -hmm. Everett, Long, Bell. And the state in Florida made a mistake. They should have put my mother's maiden name down there. They put Robert Everett Bell, and then they put it my mother's maiden name on there. But I think they should have put all four names because those people were so influential to me. You know, how you love your parents. Mm -hmm. And I screwed up. I screwed up so bad, you know. And they loved me anyway. Whether I was doing right or wrong, they still loved me. You know, they always made sure that I had the right key to unlock the door when I come home at one o'clock in the morning. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because they wanted to make sure when I got in the house, they could like my dad could beat the crap out of me. <laughs> you don't have to go outside to do that. So I forgot even what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Gateway RV. Yeah. So in meeting you, uh, we did our orientation. I drove up in the truck that Carol sold me, mm -hmm. and uh, that that was uh, that was an endeavor uh, to get the windshield replaced in that old truck. So let me back up and say, the the reason why I'm at Gateway is because of Carol and met the man. I was doing a job for him. I was filling up his propane tank, and I leaned back on an old. F-250, and I smelled something, and I looked in the bed of this old truck, and there was like old chicken bones and rotted meat, <laughs> <laughs> and I looked back over, so I'm watching the propane tank, I'm filling, I'm watching the gauge, I'm doing what propane drivers do, right, and Carol's there smoking a cigarette right next to the tank while we're, <laughs> we're filling up the thing, and he leans up and goes, hey, I'll sell you that truck. And I was like, man, I don't want your old nasty truck. And he goes, no, no, no. Look, all RV travel trailers. I was like, like what's that? So, like working at a carnival? And he's like, no. You, you hook up to its brand new travel trailer, and you go all over the country. And he's explaining what the mm -hmm. business is, and I'm not even interested. And he goes, you can make a lot of money. And I was like, really? You can make a lot of money? You know, all of a sudden, I got it. You know, I'm interested. He goes, well, first I got to sell you that truck. I was like, uh oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 that truck's grandfathered in. It has a history with the company and it's already been on the insurance. It's already passed all the stuff. And I'm looking at this truck and it's like, there's no way that truck's passed any inspections. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, trying to, to not make the long story longer, but I buy the truck not understanding that I had to do the upgrades myself before it would pass the inspection because I'm like that. But the grandfathered in part, I love that part. So he's like, you can make a lot of money, but you got to sleep in your truck. And I was like, oh man, I got him now because he doesn't know who he's talking to. I've spent most of my life sleeping in my truck. So I came up. <laughs> I want to say from that moment, it was like within a month I met you and you were doing the orientation and Carol was like, yeah, just get your date. I called in. I can't remember who I talked to when I called in, but I got my date to come mm -hmm. up and do my orientation. And Carol was like, yeah, it'll be fine. You'll get up there. You'll spend the whole day. But hey, you're going to have to pee in a cup. And I was like, no problem. I got that. <laughs> he goes, after that, you'll do a checkout trip and then they should give you your first trailer. And I, was, I was excited mm -hmm. and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then that old truck he sold me broke down on the very first trip. <laughs> <laughs> Where was your first trip? Oh, Southern Alabama. Okay. And there was, are any of those guys still here? I have to see. I'd do you remember who, who they were? See, that's what I'm terrible with names. I'm horrible faces. If you showed me a picture of some of those guys, mm -hmm. yeah, from 33 months ago, yeah, I can go, yeah. Um, 
And was the guy out in the parking lot today? Yeah. Was he? Uh, he was out in the parking lot. Charlie. Probably. Yeah. Charlie How long has Charlie been here? Yeah. Well, maybe around the same time. Yeah. So back to the orientation experience, which launched this career. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow, this is really a professional organization. And I was, because you know, I've gone to other places and done other work. And, you know, driving has always been a part of what I've done for a living. And now it's not only a part of what I do for a living, it's my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And living in my truck with my little fuzzy dog. And you go all these miles and I get to meet random people almost every day. And I can usually, you know, I I do my best as a representative because, you know, we were in a contract deal, but still I represent Gateway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do my best to be a good representative when I meet these people. And honestly, the most work in that representing of gateway is when you get to the dealership, you see these people, you know, and they're, they're just happy that the trailer's not destroyed. (laughs) (laughs) You take care of it the best you can because you're pulling your paycheck around the whole time. So, so many dealerships, you know, and there's honestly, there's a few places that I probably wouldn't care to go back to. And it's, it's all about the people, but I can't judge them. They probably felt the same way about me because, you know, I've had bad days too. But on the journey of from leaving here at Gateway to go to our customer, to our dealership, you do, you get the opportunity at all the places you stop. If you just take a moment and look around, Mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to meet some amazing people. And I have to say that has been part of the most exciting thing of being a RV transport. Where would you say is the neatest place that you've been able to see? Oh, now, yeah. Uh, so many. Um, in recent memory, well, Florida. It's, uh, I had the opportunity in doing this work to go back to the county that I was born in. Okay. That probably would have never happened if I had not been an RV transport man. I thought about it. For decades, you know, I've never been back to where I was born. Thought about it, you know, but, you know, life gets there. You're raising your children. Mm -hmm. You're providing for your wife and your home. You're doing all these things that you feel is so important. Time gets away, right? And, yeah. So so, uh, that would have been Clearwater Beach, Florida. Okay. Yep. Meese Hospital, Pinellas County. Where it all began. That's know. what they say. You know, yeah. I saw a piece of paper that, that had my name on it and had all this <laughs> stuff. And uh, I have that memory. And uh, so, yeah, I went back there. That was all because of what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that would be the neatest for me. Uh, and there's some other very, very notable events that have happened. You know, the first trip to California, crossing over the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done both of those, right? Everybody that's done this, they know you're going over 80 or you're going over over 40. And uh, the experience of going to Flagstaff Mountain in Arizona and you cross over all that elevation, yeah, yeah that, that's a, for a first-timer like me, you know, because 33 months, how many guys, there's quite a few people I'm sure that have been doing this much longer than I have. And I've got to meet a bunch of them, you know, I was telling you about Carol, you know, to learn from those guys. Yeah. They've been very gracious to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Alabama Charles, yeah. that's what I call him. Yeah. They kind of <laughs> took me under, under their wing and, uh, we've had several, uh, like, uh, the three amigos mm-hmm. yeah. traveling across the country. You got a, an Alabama representative, a Georgia representative, and then me from Tennessee. Do you ever run together with them? As, as often as possible. If we have trailers that are going the same direction, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's uh, some traditions that they they let me in on. The, the first time that they took me to the Golden Corral 
in Amarillo, <laughs> Texas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they kept talking about it. And I was like, there's no way to describe the the event of my understanding is the original Golden Corral. Oh, really? Amarillo, Texas. Uh, there's a big plaque out front there, uh, 1973. And you know, I'm the guy that'll go in. I was like, hey, how long have you been working here? And I was surprised when the lady told me 17 years. It's like, who works at a Golden Corral for 17 years? And then I look around, how immaculate. So I've been into some Golden Corrals. And I was like, no, we're not coming back to this place. <laughs> I mean, it's a hog trough, right? But Amarillo, Texas, uh, for all those who may be listening, if, if you're in, into the uh, the Golden Corral Partner uh, buffet event, yeah, I'd say highly <laughs> recommended. Okay. Well, I'll go through that. Next time I go through Amarillo, I've only gone through there a couple times, but not ever think about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't miss it. It's right there off the interstate. Yeah. Uh, so before you came on with doing doing RVs, what were some of the what was some of your career progression? What were some of the other things that you've done? Well, uh, the first job I ever had, I was, had a paper route, mm-hmm. and I was in competition with my next oldest brother. Um, we had bicycles, and we would roll up. The, uh, he had eighty six houses, and I had eighty two. And we did them on a 10-speed bicycle at first. And then my grandfather took pity on me and bought me a scooter. Is it easier on a scooter? Oh, yeah. You've seen those things. They look like little Vespas, but it was the Honda version. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's where you have right. the deck. Yeah. So I could load them on there. And um, so I took over my next oldest brother's route. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did all of that. And then my father... Um, got a contract with the government and he said, there's no way in hell I'm leaving you here with your mama. And that's how the five high schools happened. Um, so then I wound up in, uh, inner city Memphis, uh, working at a Kroger, uh, bagging groceries. That was an experience. I, I'm sure I'm not quite sure, but no, oh, yeah, my dad did that by design. He uh, enrolled me. I was a freshman in high school, and I started off in the school back at home, McMinn County, Tennessee. Uh, My oldest brother graduated from there. My middle brother was going into his junior year, so he got to stay with my mom because he was very well behaved. And then my dad's like, come on, let's go. And it was great for the first six weeks. And then I was like, I want to go home. He put me in Wooddale High School. I went from school that was, there were three black kids in the school. And I went to a school where I was one of three white kids. My nickname was Cornbread. Okay. (laughs) What's up, Cornbread? (laughs) So, needless to say, I think I was probably, uh, oh man, I'm, I might have weighed 110 pounds, and everybody was like six foot five. <laughs> <laughs> I was just lost in the hallway, and I did that for a full semester, and I was like, anything you want, Dad, whatever you want. And he's like, okay. He pulled me out of that school, and I, I went to a... Um, Germantown High School, and that was that was weird because there was an entire population of sophomores driving convertible BMWs. Hmm. Yeah, and I was on my scooter. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, again, I did not fit in, and uh, that's just one of those things, right? So, um, bagging groceries there too and uh still didn't have a car i was trying to get to my first car and and that was later worked uh there on mount moriah in memphis tennessee and that's where all this was going on these schools were in shelby county memphis tennessee uh mount moriah uh, I met a guy there at the second, third, no, the third school that was there. I went to three schools in that area. 
and that it was Kirby, Kirby Cougars. And there I met a guy uh, named David Nicholson, and we became friends. And uh, he got me my next job with Mr. D at the Ponderosa. There's a theme here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ponderosa Steakhouse on Mount Moriah. And uh, so we would work two nights a week, and then we'd work the weekends. And uh, it was great during the week because you could stay out till midnight on school nights. And I got to ride with David to and from work because he had a car. He had a Camaro Z28. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, all the chicks dug him. He was, <laughs> I was just like the weird sidekick <laughs> riding around in the car. Uh, so that's all the stuff I did in school pretty much uh, that I can tell you about because uh, the illegal activity, I don't want to incriminate myself. <laughs> uh, you know, past that, uh, professionally, yeah, I did go to some higher education and I learned some very valuable skills that met some of my mentors, um, which was probably, you know, you'd have to fast forward about another five years or more. And I, I got into the security industry and uh, I did uh, a full career in access control, uh, fire alarms, life safety products. Uh, you know, uh, you remember the commercials, I've fallen in, I can't get up, Mm -hmm. uh, life alert type products, you know, to where you would, um, help people that need help in getting the communication out. You know, if you fall and you can't talk to anybody, you know, back then in those days, uh, cell phones were not very prevalent and, you know, you had to get to your landline, which is usually five foot up, four foot, five foot up on the wall in the Mm -hmm. kitchen. So, yeah, you know, you, you go through that. I mean, the, the technology is amazing these days. I, I've been out of that industry now for, oh, probably close to a decade. But I, I spent a full 25 years in the life safety industry, low voltage. And uh, in that was a lot of driving, but not really the lifestyle that I was describing. You know, with what RV transport, because that's, that's when people ask me what I do, I, I just say, hey, I'm an RV transport man. Mm-hmm. They usually don't know. I have to go into detail. <laughs> a little bit about what that means. What, yeah. is, what is an RV transport, man? And they go, you mean you get to sleep in those things? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of those. It's an industry where if you're if you've never been exposed to it, you wouldn't even really think of that it was a, that it existed. Yeah. And then once you're exposed to it, you see RV transporters all over the place. I, know, yeah. I mean, of course, we see them all over the place because we're, we're here. here but... but even when we're driving across the country, we'll see RV transporters all year long, every part of the country, that you never would have even noticed before. Oh, yeah. I thought when Carol was pitching the whole idea, I thought he was just fooling. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was like, what? And, uh, you know, it, it took a little convincing. I want to say I had three conversations with him before I bought his truck. Yeah. Okay. And he had Kevin on the other end of the phone. It was, I was like, I was standing there and he's talking to Kevin, convincing me that, yeah, 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 sell him the truck and he's in. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's what he said exactly because, you know, he was holding the phone, but that's kind of how that went down. Yeah. Did you feel prepared? I never feel prepared. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I tried. I probably didn't. I didn't sleep that night. I don't know if you noticed. I was really tired. I, I, don't I didn't recall. sleep at all. I was just like, let's get the wind. Because I had to get a windshield for that old truck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't make windshields for those old trucks. It was really difficult to locate one. How and, many miles was on that truck when you bought it? Well, that that's interesting that you asked that question. Because I asked the same question when I was <laughs> purchasing the vehicle and Carol was smoking cigarette and he just leaned in and he looked at the odometer and he goes, Oh, about 280,000 miles. And I guess what that says. <laughs> well, come to find out <laughs> that particular model of truck at 399,000, it rolls back over to 200,000. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it goes back. To 200 and then it counts back up again who knows how many times it's done that <laughs> yeah so once i found that out i was like carol he, he just he didn't say anything he was, 
whatever. So uh, who knows how many. Uh, I sold that truck last year to uh, a fella, and he's still driving it. It's a, but it's a local truck. Yeah. He's driving around local, working out of it. And uh, so that is what, what was that? That was a 7.3 liter Navistar motor, 1995. And I mean, yeah, it might have 800, 900, who knows? Mm-hmm. It's still going. And it was all original, all original injectors, everything. Uh, the bolt on equipment, of course. But it uh, seems like Carol has a history with million mile. Trucks. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's, he's saying he hasn't put a new motor in that truck. I thought, wow. And he's only done one transmission at 700,000. Yeah. Really he, he needs to start a podcast. Yeah, I figured, how do you do this? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, teach others how to do million <laughs> right. trucks. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what advice would you give to a new RV transporter? Pull all of the seats out except one. It's where you have as much room as possible. Good advice. And then you don't feel guilty about passing up hitchhikers. <laughs> so for that reason only, get rid of all your other seats. <laughs> <laughs> advice. Uh, wow. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, I'm a very spiritual person. Um, I'm open about my Christianity. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say that if you're not talking to God all the time, by the time you hit interstate 285 around Atlanta, you're going to be <laughs> because yeah, you know, there's a lot of close calls out there. I mean, honestly, the most dangerous thing that as Americans, statistically, the most dangerous thing any of us do is get behind the wheel. And if you have the mindset of safety in mind, mm-hmm. then you're going to increase your chances because it's never you. It's always the other time out there. That's, running crazy yeah (laughs) that's an interesting that could be applied as a philosophy in life it's like most of us always everybody else (laughs) (laughs) you know truly though yeah uh, everybody's made their own share of mistakes but uh, yeah advice to you know everybody's been behind the wheel for how long you know I mean I think back on it and you know I've turned all my children loose with these two ton death machines. Mm -hmm. And then I put this digital chainsaw in their hand and then stick them behind the wheel. I love my children. (laughs) Why would I do that? (laughs) Why would I do that to them? But (laughs) don't we all, you know, it's our, it's our culture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say, um, if you could minimize your digital communication or, you know, you buy a headset, and uh, put your phone up to where you can have it visible all the time. Yeah, all of those things. You know, every everybody has to take a really hard look at how they're operating. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've always had problems with being a specially rated insurance driver, this might not be the path you'd want to choose. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay any yeah. any poo poo on it for anybody. But uh, yeah, by safety. Safety. All of that to say safety. Yeah. Well, we echo that for sure. Yeah. yeah but and you're yeah. but you're right. You bring up a point. This there's a, there's a lot of really cool stuff that this industry provides people, but it's not for everybody. Uh, in fact, when we were hiring regularly, we have a pretty high like it's not even a turnover rate because we'll we'll do the we'll do the orientation. Say we do the orientation for ten people, or in, I don't remember how many were in your orienta- your orientation. Probably five or six. And it's likely that two of those people just never came back. Uh, One maybe did a trip or two and then never heard from him again. Of the remaining two, one probably stuck around for a year and the other one was probably you. You know, somebody that stuck around for a little bit longer. So it's it's really not for everybody. Uh, But you do have to be in the right frame of mind, I think, to be successful. For sure. Or, Or an idiot. Maybe that's, it. Maybe that's our common thing. <laughs> I'm just, you know, uh, I kind of, you know, kind of, uh, there's no easy way to say this. Is, uh, you know, once I get locked into something and I'm comfortable, mm-hmm. I, I don't like the change. 
you know. I think that's called being human. Yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah, I think it's pretty yeah, common. So nobody likes change, but here it comes. Yeah. yeah. When you're in the truck cr- make, putting all these miles on the odometer, what are you listening to? What do you listen to? Oh, well, you know, I, I had to break that down for you. Oh, are you talking about music or just entertainment? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, what do you... Okay, well, all right, so I break it up, all right? Um, like I said, you guys, you guys know how old I am, and so I, I know what the Dewey Decimal System is. And used to, you wanted to learn something. Well, you had to go to the library, and if the library was full up, well, you had to, to reserve a spot, and then you go and you th- you search out your research material through the Dewey Decimal System, and you get books. And sometimes they don't have a lot of books to choose from, so you get them, and you actually would read a book. Mm-hmm. Well, fast forward to today, you don't have to do any of that. I mean, yeah. so I spend a lot of time listening to the people uh, read books to you mm-hmm. on the internet for free yeah because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i don't mind the ads right so um yeah lots of different books um you know like i said um, i'm christian there is a probably the largest independent broadcast on the planet is out of a little town in arkansas and it's called the shepherd's chapel and it's uh the, the founder of that, Pastor Arnold Murray, he was an old Korean Marine war vet. They started this uh, somewhere in the early 80s. They were broadcasting on a C-1 satellite feed around the world, and it still is today. Um, so you go to YouTube, you know, they got a feed to YouTube, and it's 24-7, and you have now... They, they do all of the recordings of Pastor Ronald Murray, and he basically just reads a chapter, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, God's holy word. So that's uh, not every day, but a good portion of my trip, you know, I break it down in percentages, probably 30% of my trip is uh, listening to them read the Bible. But the coolest part about that is for 30 minutes, they will do that. And now it's his son that's doing the live broadcast. He's reading the Holy Word. And then that's the first 30 minutes of the program. Then for the next 30 minutes, it's questions and answers. People all over the world write in. You have to to write in. That's the only way you can get your questions answered. And so they just read random people from everywhere, questions about the Bible. And then they talk about it. Mm -hmm. and give answers and what's neat about that is they say don't listen to us (laughs) after as they're giving the answers you know you hear us say the answers to god's word but go search it out for yourself and i thought that was an interesting way because my upbringing every time i was drugged to church it was always someone up there preaching and basically saying, listen to me and never instructing me to go look at it for myself. And so about, it's been about 13 years ago is when I actually started looking for the answers for myself. Um, aside from that, uh, a lot of talk radio, um, there is a, an app called rumble. If you've been to rumble, Rumble, there is zero, um, unless it's illegal, you know, but other than that, you can say whatever you kind of like right here. You can say whatever you want to say, and there's no censorship on Rumble. And I like that because there's quite a few news information channels, um, independent journalists Mm -hmm. from all over the world that record their reports and post them, zero censorship. It's pretty cool. Because I know that um, lots of people have been canceled. Mm-hmm. We've all experienced that in some form. So uh, so 
aside from Rumble Music, Marshall Tucker Band, Almond Brothers, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay. Those are just a few of, of music that I like. And there, there's some contemporary stuff that I can tolerate. You know, kind of kind of like when it comes to music, it's not really the, what's the how do you, genre? It's not really the genre. It's to me, it's either good music mm-hmm. or bad music. Or, you know, now, is there a middle? Nah, it's either good or it's bad. And, you know, that's everybody's own opinion, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, I remember growing up listening to the Sugar Hill Gang. For those of you that might remember the Sugar Or the Beastie Boys. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember yeah. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was... Um, trying, what else do I listen to? Now, sometimes you just roll the window down and stick your head out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I saw quite a few dogs doing that. Yeah. And I was wondering what that was all about. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back at your whole life, what are you the most proud of? Well, I would have to say all of my marriages and all of the children that I've helped raise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when you ask that question, I just think of it as an earthly sense, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I, I've heard you know, Christian, and I understand where I was before I came through my mother's womb. So this relationship that I have with my God, God the Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, yeah, and then that that's that's pro- that's a whole nother discussion, and I would love to go into it in detail. And if you want to ask some questions about it, I'll elaborate. But uh, my family, uh, the the people that I've got to develop not only working relationships with, mm-hmm. uh, but just friendships in general. Even though I don't see any of those people because like I said to me I describe it as seasons all these people come and go in and out you know and I I guess the same thing for them I come in and out of their lives but the memories I know that that's the one thing that you're taking with you when you die so I used to be the guy that took all the pictures Mm -hmm. not anymore I, I focus on the memory in my head. Now I have pictures, don't get me wrong, of friends and family. And, uh, you know, every now and then I'll, I'll sit back in my easy chair in my office at home and I'll have a glass of brandy, smoke a cigar, look at old pictures, reminisce. But these memories, mm-hmm. we're going to carry those forward when we really go home. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I get so excited about that because going to remember everything and then i believe that uh the bad stuff i think that just like how i am now and i'm going to say i'm not different than most but you know when the bad things happen you know the grief that we all have to wade through yeah we find ways to put that away and that's just being human right Mm -hmm. because we don't want to right but but it is still part of what makes us who we are You can't totally forget about those things, but you get to use that. And how I get to use that is through how the Holy Spirit strengthens me. And uh, so I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus to strengthen me because ask me if I'm happy. Are you happy? Some of the time. (laughs) (laughs) But, But this deeper question is, Ask me if I'm at peace with my unhappiness. Be at peace with your unhappiness. Yeah, finally. Finally. And that doesn't come from this world. You know, I'm going to say, like, I'm not, I can't be that much different than most, but maybe I am. I've searched, you know, you make, you you grow up, right? Go get a good job, make a lot of money, buy a lot of cool stuff, cars, guns, trucks, boats, 
vacations. Yeah. And I had this illusion of peace for a long time. But when the happy would leave, because, you know, happy comes and goes as much as you want it to stay all the time, uh, the happy wasn't there and there wasn't any peace. The illusion was gone. And all I can say now is the peace that I have now in my heart. You hear me tell you about it, but you'll never know. You don't know what's in my heart, just like I don't know what's in anybody else. I don't know what's in yours. You know, I could guess. But there is one that does know, and that's our Creator. It's our Father in Heaven. He knows what's in our hearts. He's the only one who does. And the moment I had a change of heart, God was like, you know, I can work with that. I mean, I know you're going to screw it up anyway, but I can see your sincerity. Mm -hmm. And for that, I can give you this peace that you're looking for in the middle of your unhappiness. Because if you, if you search it, there's no promise of happiness forever here. There's not as happy as I am driving in my truck with my little fuzzy dog going down the road, you know, because that sense of purpose, you got a job, right? You know, it, it comes and goes. But uh, I've spent 33 months, 45 states, 400,000 miles. I don't know how many trailers I've got to haul. And I've had, oh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds now of conversations with totally random people. Mm -hmm. And when I say random, that's not in a derogatory sense. It's just all these people, you meet them. And they're like, hey, how you doing? It's like, how many times a day do you get asked, how are you? What do you say? You know, I get asked that question. I still, I get asked that question all the time. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, what do you mean? I was like, you know, all the time. And I've learned not to tell everybody how great it's going. Because when you do that, everybody wants in. <laughs> <laughs> so you save a little bit, right? Whether it's the good stuff or the bad stuff, everybody's going to sit on a little bit because you're not always ready just to unload on people. And totally lost my train of thought. That's all right. I must have had a seizure or something. <laughs> uh, one of the questions that I'm trying to... That was a long enough pause, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. So yeah, yeah. That's a good... Okay. Yeah. No, that's yeah, fine. I'm learning this biz as we're... Hey, this is all winging it, baby. So the... Like the the wrap-up question, which is probably the most important question. All right, are you ready? You need like the dun 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we should we should have some <laughs> sound effects sound board. Effect board yeah. yeah. What's your favorite dessert? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream. Okay. All right. Ice cream. All right. Definitive. We're keeping a spreadsheet with uh, pecan pie. Okay. And then depending on where you're at, it's pecan. All right. <laughs> In Tennessee, what is it? I always say pecan. Because that, that's the way my grandmother would say it. She made the pecan pie. Yeah. And I'd go get the chocolate ice cream out of the freezer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but she wouldn't let me scoop it because she knew I'd like pull the... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I got to go get it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Rob, uh, we do want to make sure that you know that we're really glad you're driving with us. We're, we're glad that you've had a good experience so far. Hope that you continue to have a good experience so far. Or continuing to have a good experience. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you're, uh, you're a great guy. We're glad that you're able to come sit down with us for a few minutes.